And we start with breaking news. The man accused of leaking information about the U.S. National Security Agency's top secret spying program is now officially facing charges. Federal prosecutors have filed a sealed criminal complaint against Edward Snowden. CCTV Sean Caleb's joins us now with the latest. And Sean, a lot has happened in the past hour or so. Yeah, without question, the Washington Post first with this story. And word right now is the United States is charging Edward Snowden with espionage for admittedly leaking a world of sensitive documents about top secret U.S. surveillance programs. Snowden fled his NSA or National Security Agency job in Hawaii on May 20th and then flew to Hong Kong. The U.S. believes Snowden is still in Hong Kong and is asking Hong Kong to detain him on a provisional warrant. The exact charges are espionage, theft, and conversion of government property. This information was filed under seal in federal court and begins the process of the U.S. having Snowden returned here in the United States for prosecution. The penalty for espionage can be rigid. It is rare, but defendants who are convicted of espionage could face the death penalty. Now, how did we get here? Well, Snowden has admitted that he took classified information from his NSA position and then releasing it to newspapers. He claims the documents reveal a broad NSA program to collect information on millions of everyday normal citizens, as well as culling a treasure trove of information about citizens from the Internet. Now, this information was published in a couple of newspapers, including the Washington Post, and shortly thereafter, Snowden identified himself as the person who leaked the information. As far as his options, now that the extradition process could be beginning. The U.S. is asking Hong Kong authorities to detain Snowden, eventually putting him on a plane and returning him here to the U.S. for prosecution. Snowden can fight that uh, extradition, perhaps his most logical route, maybe by claiming he's a conscientious objector. His goal could be to win in the court of public opinion. At this point, it's expected Snowden could be returned to the United States within about six months. It may sound like a long time, but on an actually, it is a pretty quick turnaround for something like this. Okay, Sean, stay with us. I want to bring uh, you back into the conversation in just a moment. But first, let me bring in Scott Oswald. He's an attorney and managing principal with the Employment Law Group and is well-versed in whistleblower cases. Scott, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, let me, let's look first at what we know. Prosecutors have filed a sealed criminal complaint. We understand it was sealed and it was unsealed. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that, the, first off, the choice of the court is important. This was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia, the fastest court in the country of all of our 94 district courts. So they were able to get this, uh, this um, sealed complaint into the court and out of the court very quickly. What it means next is it went to Department of Justice, Main Justice, the Office of International Affairs, which is responsible for uh, processing all extradition requests with each of the countries with whom we have extradition treaties. And then uh, they issued what was called a request for a provisional arrest warrant in Hong Kong. That is already, my guess, uh, with the Hong Kong authorities, and they are already looking for Mr. Snowden. Now, it would seem that the U.S. authorities have already been talking with the Hong Kong authorities before uh, they filed this complaint. My understanding is that the law that Edward Snowden is accused of breaking has to also be uh, something uh, that exists in Hong Kong. That's right. It's called the principle of dual criminality. It doesn't mean that they have to have a statute that is directly on point, meaning something that can be matched up word for word with a U.S. statute. It simply means that the underlying conduct under which Mr. Snowden has been charged would constitute a criminal violation in Hong Kong. And here's the challenge. The challenge is that that's part of the equation. The other part is that it must not be deemed to be a political offense. And the problem with the Espionage Act, assuming that is the act under which he's been charged, right. that could very well be determined by the Hong Kong authorities to at least touch upon a political offense. Okay, let me bring Sean in on that point. And Sean, the Espionage Act implies that Edward Snowden was in touch with a foreign power, may have given the documents to a so foreign power, may have sold the documents, uh, and it could be a foreign power that could be an enemy of the United States. We've seen no evidence of that, have we? Well, only the fact that he um, just released it to two newspapers, one in the UK, one in, here in, in the US. We've seen no indication uh, that he could be a spy, he could be uh, working with uh, some other uh, government. But I do have some experience. I had a secret 
uh, clearance once. I was a diplomat before I came here. And in terms of what he did, he knowingly took that information. It's very clear to him. He went through a long uh, process of background check, which is now being called into question, uh, I might add, uh, about what he can and cannot do. When he looks at that information, top secret information, he knows he cannot take that information. He knows he cannot distribute it. So what he did, he knowingly broke the law. Now, is he going, uh, how is this going to play out in the courts? Well, uh, there's no ambiguity here. What he did is illegal. He's going to come back uh, at some point and face prosecution. Now, whether he wins in the court of public opinion saying he did this because he wanted to show that Big Brother was indeed looking at the United States uh, regular citizens, prying into the, every nook and cranny of their uh, so-called private information. Uh, but unless Congress uh, changes the law, uh, that what, what, what's going to happen, uh, it, it, what, what he did uh, certainly is illegal, and he's going to eventually uh, f uh, face prosecution for that. Ani? Okay, thanks, Sean. Let me bring Scott back in here. What are the immediate implications for Edward Snowden right now in Hong Kong? Probably these being looked for. And the Hong Kong authorities are attempting to execute the arrest warrant. And my guess is he'll be in custody very shortly, maybe as little as 24 hours. So let me get this right. The United States issues an arrest warrant and asks China to carry out the arrest. Well, they ask Hong Kong, the Hong, Hong Kong, Kong authorities right. to yeah. do so. And this is what's called a provisional arrest. So the Hong Kong authorities have not even received the extradition request yet. It allows, though, the U.S. government to ask a foreign government to take someone into custody whom the U.S. government believes is a flight risk. And that's precisely what Mr. Snowden is, potentially, assuming uh, he is to be believed uh, in terms of what he's been saying. So that, that's what's happening right now. And then once he's in custody, then the real legal battle begins. Whether or not the Hong Kong authorities, number one, will determine if he is, uh, should be uh, extradited to the United States, and then number two, whether or not China will veto that action. There has been some talk of him getting asylum in Iceland. And in fact, there's been a group that's been actively working to move him from Hong Kong to Iceland very quickly. Uh, we've heard from that group today. At this stage, that's not going to happen, is it? No. I think the chances of that happening are very remote. My guess is that he has been under the watchful eye of the Hong Kong authorities for days. They know precisely where he is, and they know precisely uh, where to execute the arrest warrant. Is there any chance that the, or would the U.S. try to get him anyway, whatever the Chinese say? My guess is China will not intervene. Uh, sometimes in these situations when someone is in custody, they will attempt to negotiate uh, some kind of agreement with the host country, providing them information. I just think this situation is too politically volatile for the Chinese. My guess is that they will not intervene and they'll allow the, China, the Hong Kong authorities and the courts to work uh, through the system until finally he's extradited to the United States. So what if, from what I'm hearing here, it looks like Edward Snowden is headed back to the United States. I think so, but it may be as much as six months, maybe even longer, but he will come back in my opinion. And that extradition treaty between the United States and China makes provision for this kind of thing? Well, it's a, it's a treaty with, with Hong Kong. And it was first entered with Hong Kong, and it's been honored okay, by the me, Chinese what I'm since to find then. Out is, are there any exceptions in that treaty which says, if the guy is accused of this or that, then we can't go through with it? Well, that's if it's a political offense. Mm -hmm. And that's the real challenge. That is where the legal wrangling will be. Uh, he certainly will assert that under the Espionage Act of, of 1917, uh, that uh, this is a political offense. And this is going to be new territory for the United States government. Generally, we have not sought extradition of individuals under the act. So this will be an interesting thing to watch. But ultimately, I think that uh, uh, the US will prevail in that process, and he will be returned to the okay, United States. So Scott Oswald, thanks for joining us. Sean Caleb's, thanks My as well. Pleasure.